Hey everybody, hey Cardboard here, and in this video, we are going to test out the Quen 3 Coder 30B model with my daily driver, which is the GMK Tech K12. It has the Ryzen 7 H255 with a 780M integrated GPU. And I have 32 gigabytes of system memory installed. That might look weird right now because you can only see 15.8 uh, here, but that is because in the BIOS, I have dedicated 16 uh, gigabytes to the GPU. So if you go into the BIOS with these uh, AMD CPUs where they're basically sharing the system memory with the integrated GPU, you can kind of configure anywhere from 512 megabytes all the way up to 16 gigabytes for at least for this specific uh, PC. I think you can do different amounts depending on the system specs. So like the new Evo X2 with 128 gigabytes of uh, like unified memory, you can actually do like 64 gigabytes uh, dedicated to the GPU. Of course, there's like a lot of different configurations, and this is more geared towards Windows 11. With Linux, you can actually uh, configure it a slightly different way. But I wanted to see if I could run this 30B model. It's an 18.63 gigabyte download, so that's about how much I would need to put into uh, my dedicated GPU memory or the shared GPU memory. And you can see it's a little wonky how it does things at least for, uh, for Windows, because in my BIOS, I dedicated 16 gigabytes to the GPU. Now it's decided to do 16.5. Maybe that's like a rounding thing or conversion thing, but it also gives me this nearly eight gigabytes of shared memory on top of that, leaving me with 24.4 gigabytes that I can load into GPU memory, which is more than enough to load the Quen 3 coder model and uh, play around with the context a little bit. So I'm going to be using, for the most part, the defaults for this model. So really small context, which is only 4096, which is like 4K. Uh, typically, you're going to want a lot more than that. Uh, but I just want to see how it runs. And we'll expand the context a little bit just to see how it impacts it. The thing is, with a 780M, you really can't increase the context too much because how it works is the longer your conversation is, the more the context grows, the tokens per second actually slow down pretty significantly. So when we're talking like a fresh chat window with no context, we're going to get a pretty good tokens per second. But as it builds up and as we you know fill that context window, it's going to slow down over time. So and we'll see that when we go through some of the tests here. But let's just get the model loaded up and I, i've got the task manager up here because i think it's always fun to kind of see like how the system handles loading these models and a few things about uh, how we're going to be loading it if we open this up and we press alt and we can click it and we just want to make sure that the gpu offload is like a hundred percent of whatever this number is i actually don't know what the number represents uh discrete model layers so we want all of them to go to the GPU. And like I said, we're starting with just a 4096 context window. We'll click remember these settings and we'll do load model. And we can see when we click load model, of course, the SSD is going to kick off like crazy, but the memory usage also starts to spike. And we can see the GPU shared memory get filled up real quick to 19.6 uh, gigabytes. Now, as you can see already, uh, the system RAM is continuing to go up, and we're actually going to get like in the high 90% here. I don't necessarily understand why we're using so much system memory. Uh, I guess the part that confused me when I did this was that I still see for shared GPU memory, we've got like four gigabytes available. So why are we like maxing out our system memory? I'm not really too sure like the conversions, the numbers don't totally uh, add up for me, but this is basically the reality of trying to run this model with 32 gigabytes of RAM. Now, I'm actually recording this video on the same system where I have LM Studio running and everything else going. And as far as I can tell, it's working fine. I'm going to have to play back the video to see if there's any like interruptions or issues when I'm actually loading the model. 
but you can actually run the model with just 32 gigabytes. Now the system RAM is concerning, the GPU memory is not so concerning. There's actually a pretty decent amount of headroom still uh, left here. We've got 4.2 gigabytes uh, that we could still fill. No problem here. So uh, let's get started with something. So we'll create a new chat. Oh, we already had a chat open. So let's just delete that one to get it out of here. And I got some like just general coding questions. So this one's just about uh, like how to create a blog using Next.js. And ooh, I have the text really big just so that it's easy to see. But we can see like right away, this is actually uh, really quick. This is useful, I would say. Um, it's not like as fast as if you were to use Claude code or if you were to use, you know, ChatGPT or any of the like large cloud models, but we're running like a 780M with 32 gigabytes of RAM and we're able to get like some pretty good speed out of this. And you can see the compute there. We're maxing out 100% of our GPU and the system memory stays about the same. So luckily, you know, we're not stressing it too much as uh, we start using the model and again like I'm actually I've got OBS up I'm doing you know a share here and I'm still able to do all this stuff like I feel like my hopefully my voice is good hopefully my uh, video down here is good but everything seems to be working just fine um, I do notice that like so I have a Substack article that goes along with this and I am using a little bit more GPU memory and that's probably because of OBS and uh, doing like a screen recording here. So the results are going to differ slightly than what the Substack article shows, but I just wanted to do a video that kind of went along with it because it's kind of fun to just like see this stuff in real life. So we'll let this finish and then uh, we'll check and see how many tokens per second we got. Okay, we finished up uh, 2,300 tokens. You can see our contacts, or maybe you can't, it's really small. Uh, contacts window is already at 58% full after just that one question, but 22 tokens per second, like that's that's totally reasonable. Um, but the problem is, as the context window fills up, that's gonna slow down. So let's uh, get another question, a follow-up question on implementing uh, syntax highlighting and one-click copy for uh, code snippets and let's see I mean it still feels fast like it, it doesn't I wouldn't be like super annoyed for uh, it to go at this speed especially considering again where it's a 780m like this is a $500 mini PC that's able to run Quen 3 coder 30b with uh, 20 tokens per second like that's pretty respectable and it's I mean, RAM prices, oh my gosh, I've gotten ridiculous. I cannot believe, uh, I I don't even want to look at computer. It seems like first we get the GPUs are overpriced, then the NVMEs are overpriced, and now the RAM, and I know actually a little while back RAM was overpriced too. It's just like the regular little guy consumer cannot catch a break when it comes to computer components. And I mean, before it was like with the GPUs, it was like the crypto craze. And now with like the RAM and even the GPUs, it's like the AI craze. Uh, I don't think, especially with AI, like nothing's changing anytime soon. So that kind of stinks, especially for people trying to run local um, models. And that's why I'm doing a lot of this mini PC stuff because I think we're gonna see some improvements as far as hardware goes. Uh, being able to run stuff locally a lot faster with some like improvements uh, but we'll see how it goes hopefully they don't forget the little guy because i much prefer to run local ai and you might be asking like what's like what's the benefit and for a lot of people that are watching this you probably already know but a lot of people uh, might not know and for me the things that are important to me and i wrote a Substack article recently uh, about you know my stance on ai and really what it boils down to me is that I don't really want to rely as my life kind of starts to integrate more with AI, like it's here to stay, you know, Pandora's box. We're not going backwards. We're not, nobody's going to stop AI at this point. But like, as I start to integrate it into my life, you know, when AWS goes down or Azure goes down and like it takes off like AI off the, 
you know, the network, then like all the things that I have tied into AI, all my workflows and automations and things that help me, they're gone. And like, yeah, you know, my house could burn down and I lose my local AI or something, or I could have a, you know, a network issue or a bug and, you know, I lose my local AI, but I like to have control. And what I do mostly with AI, I don't necessarily need like these super powerful cloud models. Uh, I can get by with maybe not this this PC, the 780M. I mean, this is my daily driver, like Windows 11. I use it for coding. I use it for making my YouTube videos. I'm not really like trying to do automation and workflows with it. I have a couple other PCs on my network that I use for that. But I just want more control. I want to be able to run whatever models I want. And I want the, the privacy that goes along with that. So anyways, going down a rabbit hole. Okay, so we are at 127% context after just two questions. And you can see we're down to 18.16. I don't remember what the one before that was. I think we were definitely in the 20s. And now we're down to 18.6. And how context window, you might be like, okay, how are we at 127% context window? In LM Studio, there's three options for context window. One is that the chat just stops. It As soon as when the text is generating, it hits 100% context, it just stops and you have to open a new chat. The other option is rolling window, which is the oldest messages are just forgotten. And the most recent messages are still available. And for like something like a, you know, a chat like this, it's not a huge deal. You typically want like some of the later things that you're talking about to be included. Um, but then there's also truncate. And what that does, truncate middle, and what that does is basically keeps the initial prompts, so kind of like what whole reason why you're talking with AI, and then cuts out a whole bunch of stuff in the middle and then has like the most recent, you know, chats. So there's obviously some positives and negatives to that. Um, but I typically do like the truncate middle. That's the default option. And there's obviously going to be some issues where it's going to forget some things. So anyways, um, we're looking pretty good, but let's try and um, increase the context window. Now that we've filled up the context window, the tokens per second are going to stay about the same. So let's try doubling that and we'll go to 8192. So let's eject the model here. Uh, we'll just delete this chat and then we will press alt, select this, and then we'll go the sliders like useless to 8192. And then we'll click load model and we'll see very similar to before. I think it actually is like messing with the video a little bit. We'll see how it handles it. We can see that uh, that GPU utilization or GPU memory utilization is is going pretty high. We're not higher than before yet, but it takes a little while for it to like fully fill uh, the GPU. Okay, that little bump at the end. Uh, now we're good. So we're at 20.8. And to be honest, like we'll just we'll use the same uh, prompt here. God, I always do that. I hate the UI sometimes and this drives me nuts. Uh, we'll do the same question and we can see like initially the context window being larger doesn't really change anything. It's still super performant. We're probably getting around 20 something tokens per second. We don't really feel the pain of a larger context window until we start to fill it up and then things start to slow down. So I think in the blog uh, on Substack, we were only getting like 14 tokens per second once we've filled up uh, like the 8192 context, which is like 8K. And this model can go up to 256K context. So I have 64 gigabytes of memory sitting on my desk. It's actually right here. We're gonna go ahead and load, whoop, load this uh, 5600 megahertz so same as what I have now it's just 64 gigabytes DDR5 uh, we'll see it shouldn't make a difference for the tokens per second like the tokens per second I believe is based more on the compute rather than how much RAM I have available the RAM is going to allow me to basically 
run other things while I'm doing LM Studio because like typically I'm if I'm using AI it's because like I have I'm coding and I want to ask it a question or I'm doing something else and then I'm asking it a question so having my system ram at like 96 percent or 98 percent is not really great for actually using LM Studio uh, with Quen 3, at least for this model. I mean, other models, you can get smaller ones. They work a little bit better. Uh, like the GPT OSS 20B, that runs a lot better. Plenty of room on the system. Uh, but okay, we're still 22 tokens per second. That's what we kind of expected. We'll just go real quick, and, and we, we've only filled up 30% of the context at this point. So we'll get another question in there, see how that goes. Uh, but yeah, so for the system memory, I don't really see a benefit moving to 64 gigs as far as getting better tokens per second. Now, what you might see is that you can actually run other applications while you're using LM Studio, and that's important. So 32 gigs, you could get by, but really 64 gigs is going to be probably the sweet spot uh, just because we're pushing it to the limit here. And if you can deal with like 10 tokens per second, you can really expand the context window to like 16 or 32K. So um, we're just going to let this finish here and see how many tokens per second we get. All right, 17.24 tokens per second. We're at 65.5% uh, full for the context. So we've dropped five tokens per second. Let's see how we do with another prompt. And I'm just going to bring it back for a second here, just so you can kind of see the speed. It is really starting to slow down. Like, it's not terrible, but if I'm trying to have it generate, you know, 100, 200 lines of code, it's starting to get a little painful. It is still definitely usable, especially, for again, for a 780M with 32 gigabytes of memory while I'm recording a video on OBS Studio. Like, this is actually really great. But, um, yeah, we're starting to reach the limits here. Okay, we that took quite a while, but we did have 3,500 tokens. We are at 108.2% of our context window, and we are at 13.35 tokens per second. So you can see how as we increase that context window, the tokens per second start to decline. So you really want to adjust your context window to what your GPU can handle, along with how much RAM you have available uh, for that context window. So just something to keep in mind, but honestly, I am super duper impressed with this GMK Tech uh, K12. I mean, it's really more the Ryzen 7 H255 with the 780M and 32 gigabytes of 5600 RAM. Uh, so anything like from any of the makes or models out there of mini PCs, if you're doing like a 780M, I also have a 680M and I also have an 890M and I also have the brand new Strix Halo I'm going to be testing all of those very similar to things like this uh, where we're just like taking kind of like a single model and doing a deep dive just to see what it can do. Um, I'm curious to see how the 680 does with this. I'm not sure it's going to be usable, but uh, we'll see. So anyways, hopefully this was interesting. I'm going to be doing a lot of videos like this, so please subscribe. Please like the video. That definitely helps. And uh, I'll see you in the next one.